in the name of Allah, the most beneficial and merciful. Assalamu alaikum. I'm here, Muhammad Jamal Khan, lecturer in Botany, University of Education, Lahore. Today, we will discuss the topic that is binomial nomenclature. So here we have a content of uh, over this topic in which we discuss about definition. Then we have explanation with example. Then we discuss about botanical nomenclature. Then we have a ICBN. Then we discuss the principles of I. CBN then we have important rules regarding IBCN and in the end we have aims of ICBN so first of all we discuss about a nomenclature so the assignment of names to the organism is called nomenclature if we assign the name to plants then we call it as plant nomenclature so many scientists made attempt to classify plants according to their morphological anatomical similar similarities and also it includes a reproductive structure so a uh, Swedish scientist uh, that is Linnaeus Carlos Linnaeus introduced a system of binomial nomenclature according to this system the scientific or botanical name of every plant consists of two parts and one part belongs to a genus and the other part of the naming belongs to a species so plant that uh, the name of plant that belong to a genus we refer it as generic name and the name that belongs to a species we refer it as specific name therefore the name that uh, belongs to so the genus name that is common to all the species of a particular genus because uh, they all show common features of resemblance with one and other while uh, the specific name it is the name of species that is based on certain definite and specific characters and due to which this species can be differentiated from other species of a particular genus so here I attach the link of a video uh, that uh, clear the concept uh, regarding binomial nomenclature of the students so you open this link and uh, see the video here after that uh, so dear students before we going to our topic of uh, binomial nomenclature we have little bit knowledge of uh, related to uh, this topic so first of all one know what is scientific name first of all the thing is that why we use name actually name is just a code here we have a cipher cipher means that a code simply a code so name is a code or it is a, a conventional indication or symbol that is used for a means of reference to avoid any complexity and complication cumbersome descriptive phrases referred to as complication or complexity so to avoid any complication we use code for an any article or for any item and that code that we use 
to indicate something else we say it is a name so with reference to a scientific name the fundamental principle of scientific name is that that is very clear there is no ambiguity in that name and by using that name everyone know about the article or about the item in which we have an indication so scientific scientific name is that that a lot to any object specifically plant and that plant is universally known by that code and that code we refer it as scientific name so the for the scientific name or for the formation of these name of plants or organism we use codes of nomenclature and in plant these codes for nomenclature we refer to as botanical nomenclature or international code for botanical nomenclature later in this presentation we will discuss about it so now here we have some characteristics of species scientific names because these species scientific name are related to our binomial nomenclature so species scientific names are binomials it means it have it possesses two names composed of two words two names one is related to a generic the other one is related to a species simply you already in study in your previous classes regarding uh, this sentence so further binomial system was uh, founded by a scientist jean bohin but used consistently first by alenius in his book that is species plantarum 1753 he published this book the first word of the species name is belongs to genus to which the plant belongs and the second word is a species or it belongs to a species so generic name is collective name for a group of plants that that all share similar characteristics while the specific names allows us to distinguish between different plants within a genus so these are general characteristics that reveal the species scientific names or the basis of species scientific names and then here we have a simple there are over 2000 solanum species in genus solanum differentiated by specific names so we have a large number of solanum species 2000 then how we differentiate each species to other so here a simple method that is adopted by us is species scientific name and that related to a binomial nomenclature so on the basis of the the species scientific name 
we can identify all the various species of solar lamp so now we have a comparison between scientific names and their commoner common that is also referred as a vernacular names so botanical names are universal because these name, names are used as worldwide while the vernacular names are very restricted to a single language or to a particular area or region sometimes one vernacular name may be used to different taxa or taxon may have different common names as nafu is a swahili name of about 30 species of section solan so common names may be listed leading as we have we have an example of niana chungu is not common tomatoes but solanum ethopiscum while conum common name tomato is solanum lycopersica here similarly we have there are no egg plant egg in egg plants that is solanum mellow gangana so here we have a very brief history related to uh, binomial nomenclature so linnaeus is the first uh, scientist yet that used the uh, binomial nomenclature for naming the new plants so he also mentioned a uh, number of uh, binomial or scientific name of plants in his book that he published in 1753 and the name of that book is specium plant plantera here we have a mistake of spellings so after this mr condole in 1813 present a theory that is referred as theory of elementary de la botanique in which he presented the binomial nomenclature phenomena for assigning the name to plants and this is the extension of linnaeus work so after this the first international botanical congress that was held in paris in 1867 and in this botanical congress number of the scientists agreed to produce a phenomena or a method that uh, provide or assist the scientist to assigning the name of plant but in this congress or in this international botanical congress the american botanist was not satisfied with the procedure or with the codes that 
provided in this uh, International Botanical Congress of Paris that it was held in 1867. So in 1867, the first International Botanical or International Code of Botanical Nomenclature governing rules regarding the plant nomenclature and their classification. So the Linnaeus work that he presented in his book Species Plantarum established the starting point for scientific names and through the International Code of Botanical Nomenclature He standardized plant naming procedures and rules and formalized it. So the International Code of Botanical Nomenclature have some major goals that provide one correct name for each taxonomic group or taxon within a stable system of names. There are different uh, conventions regarding the International Code of Botanical Nomenclature. We call it as ICB that are conducted in different times. So the most current edition published in 2006 of uh, the ICBN would be from the ICB 17th session held in Vienna, Australia in 2005. So mostly we adopt this uh, code of botanical nomenclature. After that, the next version of ICBN will be printed after ICB 18th session scheduled to be held in Melbourne, Australia in July uh, 2011. In binomial nomenclature, we discuss uh, the nomenclature that are based on some principles and rules which are developed by a developed by international code of botanical nomenclature and those principles and rules that uh, developed by the international code of botanical nomenclature the botanist or scientist must adopt it So here we have some general principles of botanical nomenclature that we discuss here one by one. So these principles are the basic points on which the code is based. They don't uh, give detailed rules about nomenclature but they show the main ideas of the code so that they should be kept in view by any botanist for publishing a new taxon, every taxon of group of plants can have only one correct name and vice versa. And name should be applied to one group. So here we have some principles that we discuss here. First of all, the botanical nomenclature is not dependent on zoological nomenclature. So these both are different from each other. The other one is the code of botanical nomenclature applies equally to all names of taxonomic groups which are treated as plant. Very simple. So the taxonomic group that are determined by their names, they have some nomenclatural types that we discuss later in this presentation. When a species is described as a new, the author must indicate the type of specimen on which new species is based. Or uh, author must mention that on the behalf of which characteristics, on the behalf of, on the base of those characteristics or attributes, that is the major reason 
to produce a new species. So the nomenclature of taxonomic group is based on priority of publication. Similarly, the each taxonomic group with a particular cir uh, circumscription position and root can bear only one correct name that is in accordance with the rules except in specific cases. Scientific names are treated as Latin irrespective of their de uh, derivation. The rules of nomenclature are retroactive unless expressly limited. So here we have some important rules of nomenclature. First of all, we have ranks and ending of taxa. So ranks and ending of taxa basically depend, uh, based on some suffix. So the word, it is used for taxonomic group of any rank. The rank of species is basic. One or more species make up a genus. Similarly, one or more genera make up a family. One or more families form an order. One or more order make up a class. So one or more classes make up a division. Several divisions make up the plant kingdom. So the code has some special provision of the naming of the various taxa that we discussed later in this presentation regarding the suffix. So the second one is prior principle of priority. A scientific name is reserved for each type of plant, but in some cases, uh, due to misconception or due to some error, the shape, same type of plant is given another scientific name. Then the valid name is older one. It is retained. The new name is discarded and becomes the synonym. So that this rejection of name in favor of the valid name is known as principle of priority. So this principle is also applied to the International Code of Botanical Nomenclature. The next one is type method. So what is type method and why we discuss this method? So this is the modification introduced, introduced in this code. According to principles, the application of name of taxonomic group is determined by means of nomenclature types. So it is about the description of new species by an author. So the author must produce or indicate the type of specimen. So, the new species is described on the basis of this type of specimen. Whenever a person describes a new species, he indicates the plant on which this description is based and where it has been deposited as a type specimen. So similarly, the species on which a new genus is based becomes the type specimen at genus. Similarly, the genus on which a new family is based becomes a type genus of that family. So according to type method, the specimen are preserved by following rules so under the type method, we'll discuss these rules later in this presentation. So here we have a effective and valid publication. For effective and valid publication, when printed matter is distributed to the, uh, the general public or at least to the botanical institution, this thing must be done according to the article of 29 of international international code of botanical nomenclature so according to this it is not effective by communication of new names at a public meeting 
the date of the effective publication is the date on which the printed matter become available so following are the conditions attached to publication of new taxa for validity publication number one the publication must be effective number two there must be a description of new taxon number three a combination is not validly published unless the author act actually makes it and the last one number four is publication must be done in latin The other one is uh, choice of names when the taxon rank is changed or the choice of name when same rank texts are united. So for this, in some cases, a genus is divided into two or more genera. So similarly, a species is split into two or more species. In such cases, original generic or specific name must be retained. This applies also in infraspecific taxa. In some cases, a section of a genus or species is transferred to another genus or species without alternation in rank. Here, original name must be retained. In some cases, rank of genus or infraspec is changed. Here, the correct name is the earlier one available in the new rank. And if, in some cases, the taxa of the same rank are united into one, the, here the oldest name must be used for new combined taxon so in which we discuss about the retention name of divided taxa retention name of taxa on transfer so all these four uh, rules uh, that is choice of name when the toxin rank is changed choice of name when the same rank taxa are united retention of name of divided taxa and retention of name of taxa on transfer these all are related to the rule number 11 of international botanical international code of botanical nomenclature so the diff, next one is name of different taxa so in one case where repetition of the names prescribe the name of the infraspecific taxons must be same as that of higher taxons so here we have a uh, types a type method that we only discuss now here we discuss some rules regarding or assigning the name to preserve uh, so, uh, to preserve the specimen so these are the rules first one is holotype in this the original type specimen of a species which has been indicated by the author is known as holotype the other one is lectotype in which sometimes the original author has not indicated any specific plant as a type specimen then a competent person select a plant from the material originally studied by the author of that species. This is this type is known as lactotype. After this, we have a syntype. Sometimes more than one specimen have been designated by author as a type specimen. So one of those specimen becomes the holotype, while other one are known as syntype. After this, we have a paratype. In this, the specimen which have been referred by the author as similar to the type specimen are, are known as paratypes. After this, we have a isotype. Sometimes the author has other specimen other than the holotype in his collection. These all other specimen of spam species are known as isotypes. In the last, we have neotype. Sometimes the original material studied by author is missing. Then a competent research wor worker select a specimen as type specimen, and this specimen is known as neotype. So here we have some uh, rules regarding the nomenclature of taxonomic group is based on priority of publication. I already uh, give you some details. Priority of publication. A scientific name is res reserved for each type of plant. 
suppose if by a misconception or error, the same type of plant is given another scientific name. Then the valid name is older one. It is retained. The new name is discarded and becomes the synonym. This rejection of name in favor of valid name is known as priority of publication. The next one is uh, totoniums. The totonium is a scientific name of species in which both parts of the name have the same spelling. So in totoniums, the specific name repeats unaltered in the generic name. For example, so the totonium is taken as illegal in botanical nomenclature. But this method is accepted in zoological nomenclatures. The other one is the botanical name is fixed to be a taxon by a type. This is almost invariably dried plant material and usually deposited and preserved in a herbarium, though can be an image. So here we have ranks and ending of text and names. So these are basically a suffix that we use uh, to describe different taxas in, uh, in uh, hierarchy, taxonomical hierarchy of plants. So here we have the plant kingdom uh, is divided into number of categories or number of taxas which differ in their rank and size. So in biological classification, rank is the relative position in a taxonomy hierarchy so example of taxonomic rank here are uh, ranks are species genus family order uh, so uh, etc each rank subsumes under it a number of less general categories some of the families do not end with ac so they are provided with alternative names like brassic ac estero ac po ac colos ac fab ac sdk ac ap ac but in so besides the seven main categories, here we have the addition of sub and super categories. So there are infra taxa to describe variation within a taxon. So we use sub and super category to discriminate or to, to describe the differentiation or variation within a single taxa or within a single taxon so here in kingdom we have a some kingdom for discrimination within this division as kingdom so in division we have a subdivision in class we have subclass or suborder and similarly we have family and similarly in order we have suborder family we have a subfamily tribe subtribe in genus we have subgenus section subsection series and subseries in species we have subspecies variety subvariety and form and subform so there are infra specific categories subspecies variety subvariety form and subform to describe variation within a species so in e each taxa when we talk about uh, the differentiation or variation in a single taxa then we use these sub and super categories so in the extension of previous slide we have subspecies and variety so the differentiation of variation based on morphological changes that can be identified within a species as a result of adaptation to different ecology or ecological zone or to different environmental conditions. So subspecies variety is produced when we observe the morphological changes 
and those morphological variations that can be identified within a species as a result of different environmental conditions or different ecological zones the next one is form and form is the category used for only slight variation within a species then when the variation when the differentiation within the species or when the changes within a species is a very uh, minute minute uh, then we refer it as a form the other one is cultivar and it is the result of crossing over of several generations that doesn't occur naturally so when this exists and this variation within a species then species have a cultivars the next one is clone clone it generally indicate or refers to a uniform population of plant identical to mother plant produce either asexually or naturally so when identical plants produce within the population of plant then those plant we call as they are clone of each other so this these are the sub or super categories under the heading of species in general we have uh, a taxonomic uh, category that we describe here basically we use uh, the standard suffix uh, with category suppose we in kingdom we have used bionta in phylum division we use phyta in sub phylum we use phytina class opsida subclass ad super order na and order ls sub order any super family ari family ac sub family ad tribe a sub tribe ina genus non italicized start with capital letter and species non non genus name plus specific epithet italicized so here we have all these uh, rank of taxonomic categories or a standard suffix that we use with different uh, taxa or different uh, groups of plant so what are the aim of icbn basically to provide stable method of nomenclature then to avoid and reject the name which cause confusion to avoid useless creation of names the code is divided into rules and recommendations example are added to the rules and recommendations to illustrate them and the objective of the rules is to bring past nomenclature in order and to follow rules for the future nomenclature similarly one of the objective of the uh, recommendation is to bring uniformity clearness in future nomenclature so in the hand we have a uh, few things to memorize one is what is nomenclature simply it is the signing of name utilizing the formal code or utilizing the uh, formal system so what is the name of work providing the rules and recommendation for nomenclature it is the international code of nomenclature that related to algae so in case of algae we call it as international code of nomenclature for algae and in case of plant we call it as international code of nomenclature for plants or in case of formally it is called as international code of botanical nomenclature so what organism are covered by icn these are simple land plants algae and fungi so this is all about for today's lecture that is related to a binomial uh, nomenclature in which we discuss the brief history and then we discuss about uh, the rules and principles 
for assigning the name of plant related to international code for botanical nomenclature and after that we briefly discuss about those principles and rules and in the end we discuss the suffix or uh, sub and super categories of various texts uh, of uh, taxono taxonomical hierarchy for classification of uh, plants that started from kingdom to species so this is all about may allah protect us from pandemic coronavirus stay safe and healthy allah hafiz